Sly Cooper, Rise of Vexen. Chapter 1, Part 2. Ivan chuckled to himself as Cecilia brought him something she had found in the gardens of his lavish home, then made up a story about how it had magical properties by using it to make a necklace, and the person who wore it would become a prince or princess. Cecilia eagerly smiled and ran to where Ivan kept a large stash of craft supplies. It ranged from simple buttons and glue to wire and pipe cleaners that would keep the little wolf busy for hours. I never thought I'd see the day when you come to me with your tail between your legs, Inspector. Ivan smiled, looking up from handing Cecilia a few bright red pipe cleaners. But I suppose there is a first for everything. Please, sit, he offered, pulling a chair out at the table for her as Carmelita pulled a red backpack from her shoulders. Ivan sat down across the table from her and folded his hands, locking gazes with her. The unbroken stare made her shift in the seat, trying not to back down. I doubt you've come to arrest me, seeing as you've brought such an irresistible gift with you, he observed, turning his gaze to the jar of pickles sitting on the table next to Carmelita. Another few uneasy minutes passed as the noise of Cecilia's work kept the room from being totally silent. I need your help, Carmelita finally answered, shoving the jar towards him. Ivan caught it without breaking his gaze and raised his eyebrows. Now, this is something that doesn't happen every day. What is a well-renowned Interpol officer doing, coming to a well-known thief for help? It must be big, or else you would have brought your badge and shock pistol, he mused, opening the jar and taking out a pickle. I want to become a thief. <laughs> Ivan nearly spit out his mouthful of pickle in response, forcibly swallowing as Cecilia looked up and giggled. <laughs> Grandpa, you're funny, she said as Ivan wiped his mouth and smiled. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. Why don't you take this necklace to Babusia and see if she will help you finish, he said, kissing her forehead as she left. Why would you want me to teach you this? You've tried to put me away more times than I can count, Ivan countered, sitting lopsided in his chair, making Carmelita feel vulnerable. How she wished she had brought her shock pistol with her. Will you do it or not? That's what I'm asking. I don't need to explain myself to a- <coughs> Ivan cut her off by slamming his hand down on the table, looking at her from under his lowered brow. Watch what you say, Miss Fox. You may have some power as an agent of the law, but the moment you came to me as just another citizen, you lost your right to demand things. The world you want to be a part of is not a world that you can simply dive into and begin making demands. You have to earn that right. So I will ask again. Why do you want to become a thief? He asked with a quiet but intimidating tone. I don't have time for this, Carmelita huffed, picking up the bag and beginning to walk out when Ivan called out behind her. <laughs> it's Cooper, isn't it? Carmelita stopped and laid her ears back, her heart skipping a beat as she heard Ivan chuckle. It's written all over your face, Miss Fox. I can see that lonely desperation behind the mask you put on. Ivan prodded. Carmelita sighed and hung her head, looking at her ring as if to ask, what would Sly do in this situation? The people I've dedicated my life to, the thing that I fought for, suck the life out of me. I've given so much to it, and the only thing my life in law enforcement has given me are long, lonely nights. She turned around and almost shamefully walked back to the table, setting her bag on the chair. When I first met Cooper, it was like a breath of fresh air and became something that I look forward to. I felt alive. But now that he's gone, I'm back to the same dead grind. I feel empty, lost, and alone. I just want Cooper back. I don't think I could go on without him. Ivan sighed heavily and sat back in his chair, crossing his arms over his chest. For a long while, an uncomfortable silence fell over them until Ivan laughed and shook his head. 
<laughs> you are really something, Inspector. Had you given me a different answer, I would have shot you where you sit. Ivan said, reaching under the table and setting down a large gun with a solid thud. But your reasoning has given me an interest. He continued, standing to his full height and putting his hands behind him. I've brought this, if you think it will help. Carmelita said, reaching into her bag and placing the Thievius Raccoonus on the table. Ivan's eyes widened when he saw the old book and walked over to it, placing a large hand on the weathered cover respectfully. Is this what I think it is? Yes, this is Cooper's Thievius Raccoonus. Ivan dropped a thumb over the edge of the cover, fighting the temptation to open the book and finally learn the secrets from one of the most exceptional thieving families of all time. But he smiled to himself and put it back into Carmelita's bag. As much as I would love to have a look at what the secrets are to his family, I have too much respect for him. Besides, my teaching you the secrets of the Sivius Raccoonus would be like you teaching a new recruit how to be an Interpol officer like you while using your mentor's notes. I'll teach you my tricks, but if you want to learn Cooper's tricks, you need to learn them from him, he said, motioning for her to follow. Oh, I think I should mention that I only have two days. Carmelita announced as Ivan stopped at a lever, smiling at her while reaching for the handle. Then I suppose we should get started. Pulling the handle made a door open that led to a dimly lit room. Carmelita reached for her shock pistol out of habit when her hand missed the cold titanium grip, then noticed the weight missing from her leg where she usually holstered it. The first thing we need to do is get you some different clothes. A thief's appearance is just as important as a thief's reputation and the results of their work. Phineas! Ivan called. A well-dressed weasel with a stiff posture came out of the shadows and bowed to Ivan. Take this young lady here and give her something that will better fit her new trade. It will give me time to prepare a lesson or two. Phineas bowed stiffly, then motioned for Carmelita to follow him as he turned and stiffly walked back towards the shadows where a double door opened to a tailor's shop. Immediately after the doors closed, Phineas reached into his pocket and pulled out a long tape measure, pulling it around Carmelita's body as though he were a ninja. Carmelita tried to protest his handsy approach, but Phineas had completed his measurements before she could say anything and began working furiously. Threads and bits of fabric flew into the air as the glint of needles and scissors flashed in and out of Carmelita's sight. He only seemed to slow down for a moment when he was attaching one piece to another, only to speed back up once he was done. A few more moments passed as Carmelita went to look at the dozens of bolts of beautiful fabric all around them. She was about to look closer at an elegant, wine-colored satin when Phineas grabbed her shoulder, pulled off her jacket, and spun her around. The motion tossed her clothes and necklace off. Before she came to a stop, she felt something pulled onto her form, finding that she was now dressed in a close-fitting, full-covering black outfit, complete with a hood, eye mask, tail sleeve, soft-soled shoes, and a face mask that doubled as a neck warmer. She turned this way and that, trying to figure out how Phineas had pulled on these clothes without a blink. How did you? But Phineas didn't answer as he motioned for her to follow, and stiffly walked back out into the training room where Ivan stood with a tablet computer. Ah, Inspector. That's quite a good look for you. Ivan chuckled when Carmelita noticed something missing. My necklace! Where's my necklace? She asked, feeling her throat when Phineas held out the choker-like necklace. This? I think this would give- But Carmelita snatched it away from Phineas before Ivan could finish and put it back on under the neck warmer. It's my father's badge. She explained mournfully. Ivan nodded, thanking Phineas. Does he speak at all? Carmelita asked, trying to get used to the clothes she would wear from now on. Unfortunately, no. His voice box was badly injured as a child during a civil war in his home country. I found him before I retired and helped him get the treatment he needed. When he showed me his skills as a tailor, I brought him here to be my personal tailor. Ivan chuckled as he called out to someone, lighting the room revealing stacked containers arranged in a perimeter. For this first lesson, you are going to hide your presence from me. Guards of any sort can be rather stupid for the most part. Sometimes they will have better training and will be on the lookout for anything suspicious. 
I will be in the middle of this crate maze, where every passage will lead. If you can sneak past me and get to the other side without my noticing, this lesson is complete. If not, I'll teach you how to do this. Carmelita's adrenaline spiked as Ivan made his way to the center and called for her to start. Be sure to put up your face mask. Training in full attire will help you get used to it. With her mask in place, she walked through a path to the center where Ivan stood, his eyes closed and his arms folded. She made it halfway through the center with soft steps, when Ivan stood over her and tapped her on the shoulder. You lose, <laughs> he said with a laugh. Carmelita let out a frustrated growl and stamped her foot. How in the world were you able to hear me? I couldn't hear me. Your tail brushed against the crate and your steps were heavy. Hours passed as Ivan taught her drill after drill, lesson after lesson, each one slowly pulling her away from the life of law enforcement and into the underworld of thieving. By the end of the second day, Carmelita hardly recognized the fox she had become and, to a degree, liked what she saw. Now, there is one last thing you need before I let you go. An alias, especially for you. Carmelita pulled back her hood and took off her face mask. I can think of something later. Thank you for training me, she said as Ivan bowed to her in return. Should you need my help, don't hesitate to call me, he offered, holding out a card to her. What about your granddaughter? I thought you gave up the thieving life. Ivan pulled his lips to the side and laughed to himself. Just because I've stopped doesn't mean I don't have my connections anymore. He laughed as Carmelita picked up what she had brought, heading back for Bentley and Murray's safe house. It was time to take what she had learned and put it into practice. Murray, can you get any closer? I'm having a hard time seeing. Bentley radioed, tapping on his laptop to try and hack into the security system. Sorry, Bentley. I can't get any closer without being spotted. Bentley tapped on his computer and brought up a camera down the street, seeing a truck lumbering down the road. Oh no! Transport will be here any minute! Murray, get ready to- He was cut off when a knock came on the door of their safe house. Bentley froze, one of the arms of his chair reaching back and grabbing a grenade as the door slowly opened, and a shapely, black-clothed figure walked in, closing the door behind her. Well, that took a bit of searching, but I'm glad I found you. A familiar female voice said. Bentley hesitated for a moment when the figure pulled off her hood and pulled down her face mask to reveal Carmelita. Carmelita! Don't ever scare me like... What are you wearing? Bentley asked, adjusting his glasses and taking a better look at her body-hugging outfit. That's not important. What's the status of the tablet? Carmelita interrupted, coming over to his chair and looking over his shoulder at what he was seeing. Right. Murray went to see if he could get the tablet. The truck moving it will be here in less than ten minutes. The turtle cycled the cameras he hacked to show the tablet boxed and ready for shipping at the back door of the museum. I'll take it from here. You guys just keep the van warm and ready to go. I'm still pretty new at this, so I might be coming out hot. Garmalita said confidently, putting up her hood and face mask as she literally disappeared into the night. Bentley cued his mic, telling Murray to stand down as a shadow zipped past him towards the museum. Yeah, I just saw her. Or I think it was her. Once inside, Garmalita pulled herself into the shadows as much as she could, tiptoeing past armed guards and dodging the constant gaze of security cameras. With every yard she moved, a growing knot in her stomach began to form. All the slinking through the shadows felt so wrong. A locked door barred her way and was quickly instructed by Bentley to pick the pockets of the nearby guards for the key. She had learned some tricks from Ivan, but it still took her a few tries before finally lifting the key from one of the guards and it made her feel nauseous. It was all so wrong. All of this was just so wrong. Once she had the key in hand, she stumbled over to a dark corner and leaned against the wall. Carmelita, are you okay? Bentley asked over the radio. I can't do this, she murmured, her throat feeling dry and her stomach turning over and over. Just take a moment and catch your breath. It'll pass. No, you don't get it. I thought I could do this, but this is all wrong. 
I can't be a thief. Silence came from the radio until Bentley sighed. I was afraid of this. I know this must be extremely hard for you, so I won't ask you to go any further. Murray and I will get the tablet and bring Sly back. If he were here right now, he'd probably be yelling at all of us, Bentley said, the channel going quiet shortly after. Why did she think this was a good idea? It seemed so simple at the time. Now that she was in the thick of it, every fiber of her being was fighting against it. Maybe it wasn't too late to turn back and forget about it. As of yet, she hadn't really committed any crimes, right? At least besides letting Bentley and Murray go. And there was the little threat by Derry's hunter saying he would arrest her if she continued to interfere. The minutes ticked by in silence as she slumped to the floor. Had she really accepted that thieving was her only option? Surely there were other legal means to get that tablet back. Maybe the Contessa's mind shuffler affected her more than she thought. She was stuck with that crazy spider for over a month. It still didn't excuse her actions. She was stealing something, and not even from another thief like Sly would have done. With a heavy sigh, she ready to leave when a pair of guards came walking by, instantly making her freeze in place just outside of the light. Garmelita was about to sneak away when something one of the guards said caught her ear. Yeah, the boy says we'll get paid a good chunk to get it out of here. Just like that, I thought she was working for the FBI. Told them it was evidence in investigation or something. I don't really care as long as I get paid. These guns aren't bad either. My trigger finger's getting itchy. Garmelita's head felt light and her hands became cold. There was a lot more danger here than she thought. Regardless of who was taking the tablet, there were thugs mixed in with the guards. Billy, Billy, come in! She hissed when she was sure the guards were out of earshot. What's the matter, Carmelita? I just overheard two imposter guards talking. This transport is a ruse. The FBI is looking at this tablet too. Then we need to get that tablet now! The truck is almost here! I know you're gonna hate me for this, but we need to try and return it in one piece before going after Sly. Garmelita heard spluttering in huffs on the other side of the radio before Bentley sighed hard. Yes, all right, fine. Just hurry. As quickly as she could, Garmelita zipped through the shadows, being sure to leave the guards alone since it was too hard to tell who was a normal guard and who was an imposter. Around the loading dock and packed tablet were dozens of guards. No matter how she looked at it, she would have to fight at least ten guards all of them tough former colleagues. What would Sly do? She asked herself when something came over the guards' radios. All units, report to the main office. We need backup. Garmelita thought she recognized the voice as Bentley, but nothing definite. One of the guards grabbed his radio and asked for a repeat of the order, but only Static greeted him. He sent half of the guards to the front with a grunt when the voice came again, sounding more urgent. The remaining guards trotted off, leaving the crate completely unguarded for her to grab the tablet. Carefully and silently, Garmelita crept along the walls in the shadows, finding a crowbar and starting to pry the crate open when she heard a voice. I knew there was something strange going on. I kept seeing that turtle and hippo running around here. And now, here you are. Carmelita whirled around and widened her stance to see Darius Hunter standing behind her, leaning against the garage frame with his arms and legs crossed. I don't know who you are, but I assume that you're working with the Cooper gang. You are under- Before he could finish, Carmelita dove down on her hands and swept his feet from under him. She was pushing herself back up to hit him with another hard kick when Darius caught himself and jumped away, springing from his hand. Garmelita's hand brushed against her thigh, reaching for a shock pistol but missed it, making her blood run cold. She had come to rely on that pistol so much, never thinking it would ever be gone. Darius charged, throwing a hard punch that barely missed her, and punched through the wood of the box as she backflipped onto the crate. Pulling his fist from the container, Darius jumped up to meet her. Garmelita tried to remember her Interpol CQC training, but even that was barely enough to keep her from getting hit as Darius swept at her feet and threw hard punches. Well, it seems that you aren't completely incompetent, Darius said, fainting a move then planting a hard kick in Carmelita's gut, sending her careening into the wall. But you're still new, so I won't be as hard on you as I would Cooper. Darius reached behind him as Carmelita's vision steadied to see a pair of handcuffs snapping onto her wrist. I'm still placing you under arrest. 
Darius disappeared when Murray slammed his shoulder into him and pinned him against the wall, instantly knocking him out. Carmelita put a hand to her head, trying to shake off her hit, as Murray quickly came to her and picked her up. Come on, we gotta go! There's too many guards coming! Despite her pounding head, Carmelita jumped off his shoulder and ran for the crate. Not without the tablet! She shouted, pulling the splintered wood away from where Darius had hit it. When she was finally able to see the tablet, her heart sank. It was broken into dozens of small stones. A noise behind them prompted her to reach into the crate, grab the biggest piece, and run away with Murray. Meanwhile, Bentley placed the last small charge in the safe house with their maps and plans, then scrubbed the last bit of technical info from his computers, routers, and laptop. Within seconds, he rolled out of the safe house into the van. The vehicle connected to Bentley's chair, allowing him to drive away, skidding to a stop at the back of the museum, meeting Carmelita and Murray. Bentley switched the van's controls back, giving Murray control as they sped away into the night. Bentley rolled over to where Carmelita sat with a chunk of tablet in her hands as they bumped and drifted through the city. What happened to the tablet? Carmelita held up the rock with a defeated huff. Bentley's shoulders drooped. He took the stone and pulled out a magnifying glass to better see the remaining hieroglyphs. Carmelita mentally beat herself up, cursing under her breath when Murray skidded to a stop in a dark alley and called from the driver's seat. Oh, guys, I think we're not gonna make it. All the exits of the city are blocked. The sirens throughout the city sounded louder while they sat, listening to the growling idol of the van. For a while, they did nothing, until Carmelita remembered the card Ryu had given her, grabbing the van's encrypted phone and dialing the number. When he answered, there was a laugh in his voice. <laughs> so soon, Inspector. Yes, I know it's soon, but I need your help, Ryu. 